Hey guys, it's Dom here, and today we'll be looking over some of the best common cards in Legends, because I've talked about my favourite legendaries, so I thought now we'll just look at some good common cards from each attribute. So we'll start off with Strength, and the three I chose were Circle Initiate, Warcall Gatekeeper, and Rehad Horseman. So the reason why I chose all three of these is because they are very low cost cards, which I believe usually get their value. So Circle Initiate's really good because of Beast Form allowing this 2 cost to become a 4-3. And not only that, it's also got Prophecy as a tag. So that can have some unexpected moments where you suddenly get to summon it and next turn you can break a rune. There's also Morkel Gatekeeper, who's another Prophecy card. But this time he has Guard, so if they start wailing on you, you can summon him and defend himself. And then he can give a creature two extra power as well. And that's not, like, forced to be another creature. He can give it to himself as well. Which is really nice and allows you to kind of be flexible depending on the situation you're in. And the final one for strength, Rehad Horseman. He has an additional three plus power and breakthrough while equipped with an item. Which is an excellent keyword, especially if it's giving him three additional power. So, for a two cost, becoming a 5-2 with breakthrough and whatever the item he equips has as well. In the right deck, he is really good. And the thing you might have noticed here with all the strength cards I've taken, they're all very nicely able to buff power, because that is what strength's meant to be doing with their common cards, really. And they do it really well. Right, moving on to intelligence, we have a bit more of a defensive strategy, and that is Lightning Bolt, Pointy Aller Spikes, and Conjuration Scholar. Now, Lightning Bolt is just an excellent card. It does 4 damage, it's a prophecy as well, so you can be playing it for free off a rune if you're lucky. But not only that, it can choose what it goes up against, whether it's a unit or if it's just directly in your opponent's face. Meaning that if your opponent's on 4 health, then builds up a massive wall, you can just directly hit them with this and end the game. And the flexibility of this card is just really nice and simple. Then we have Pointy Wall of Spikes, which is a prophecy guard and a 2 cost with no uh, damage but free health and whenever it takes damage it will deal that same amount back to a creature so something with 9 power and 1 health for instance that will instantly die to point pointy wall of spikes because well yeah we do 9 damage and it's not even the fact of it stops at 3 because of its health being free on this like if you attack with like a 5-4 it will still destroy itself because of this thing's effect and because of this, it really does mean your opponent has to play in a specific way to get rid of it. Either using things like lethal on a low-powered unit, or use up their removal to get rid of it. Which is just quite nice, and can stall your opponent for um, aggressive strategies. And finally, we have Conjuration Scholar. Just because, you know me, I love my Atronax. And it's just a simple way of getting down two cards on the board. And with certain different combos, you can keep on re-summoning Conjuration Scholar and then getting a bunch of Frost Atronachs to the board. Okay, so moving on to Willpower, we have Dramora Channeler, Golden Initiate, and Piercing Javelin. So Dr Dramora Channeler is really good because it's not only a prophecy, but it will give you four health back the second it's summoned, or if it's been buffed more in your hand, or through invade mechanics, it could then buff your, or heal you by like, I'd say roughly between 4 and 8 is where you're usually looking with a card like this. Mainly towards the lower end though. But the thing's for a free cost, something that gives you a bunch of health and has relatively alright stats, it's pretty nice. And there's Golden Initiate as well. It was a prophecy drain and I just like this card a lot because I do like the keyword drain quite a bit. And the stats are really nice for it and it's a very simple card. And finally, we have Piercing Javelin, because we always need a bit of just instant removal. And it's a prophecy, which is just really nice, because it, come it comes off a rune. And the thing you may have noticed with a lot of these cards are that most of them are prophecies. Because, you know, that's what you want your commons to be. You want them to be things that you can kind of just get out like that really quickly. And, you know, not have to worry about using your magic on them once you get to the bigger cards. Like your legendaries and epics and other game plans so having a nice bit of removal and a nice ways of getting your health back to kind of take off a little bit of pressure on the game is really nice so after that we'll move into agility and we have chosen fighters guild recruit 
Nick Ox and Spoils of War. So Fighters Guild Recruit. I was tempted to go for these Guild Recruit here, but I just thought, you know, Lethal and Guard. I'll just put down Fighters Guild Recruit. But yeah, Thieves Guild Recruit was very close to being on this list as well. They're both excellent, just two cost one twos. And they both have very nice effects. And because Fighters Guild Recruit's a prophecy, yeah, you've, you've heard me ramble about that enough <laughs> for one video. Uh, so we'll move on to Nixox, a 7 cost 5-5, five, five, which when summoned will give you 5 magic at this turn. Basically making this a 2 cost 5-5, five, five, if you know, you get to the later turns and you do actually use all your magic very correctly on your turn. Which is obviously just really nice. And with a strong body like that, you can kind of just put a lot more threat in one lane. And you've still got Magicka to kind of do extra stuff on your turn. And finally we have Spoils of War, which is draw two cards, empower, cost one less. And well, just because it can cost itself a lot less and be nice draw power, it's just an excellent card really. It's much better than Fresh Start, even though that gets you one more card. Just because of the whole cost reduction and then allowing you to do things with those two cards you drew. Especially if you empower a lot and cause this card to be like a zero or a one cost. Where, you know, you've got a lot of magicka remaining still to do other stuff. Okay, so after that we'll move on to Endurance. Where we got Tree Minder, Blackwood Alchemist and Salter. So, Tree Minder is just really good because it's a very simple guard. And it gives you one bonus magicka. And that will allow you to kind of get a lead on your opponent. And this works incredibly well with Blackwood Alchemist who is just seen to the right. Who will gain two extra power every time your max magic arises. So it's going to go up at the start of your turn anyway. For like the first 12 turns of the game. Which is just really nice. So that means this thing's first attack is going to be at least three. And then its second's usually going to be five. And if you've done some correct combos it could be seven or nine. Which is really big. <laughs> Especially if you can hit directly onto the face. And then finally the reason why I went with Solter Is because it's probably one of the best shouts out in there in the game. Because it doesn't like banish or restrict whatever you're hitting afterwards, which is quite nice. And it can grab anything, commons, legendaries, of any power, any cost. And once it gets to higher levels, it will not only be just putting them back in your hand, it will also be buffing them as well. So with cards like this, say your opponent's finally just managed to get rid of your game plan of like an Alduin or something like Razumdar. You can just solter it back to hand. Have it be a bit stronger and then come back like on that turn or the turn after. Sometimes it can be a bit slow, but usually it is quite a decent card. And finally, we'll talk about a few neutral cards. So I went with Mud Crab, Ankle Snapper, Midnight Snack, and Crushing Blow. I was going to go with Reachman Foreman or whatever the um, Shaman one is, which kind of at the start of your turn buffs a unit by plus one plus one, but I thought that's a bit too slow. So I just went with these three instead. So Mud Crab Ankle Snapper is a very simple just 3-2 which deals 1 damage to your opponent. You know it's a nice card, it's a Mud Crab so it instantly gets a few pluses in my books and works with Old Salty's Assault. Then we have Midnight Snack which is just really nice for any Dragon deck because it's a 2 cost 2-2 two -two guard with Prophecy as well and when it's destroyed it will reduce the cost of a random dragon in your hand by 1. That's just really nice for a Dragon deck because most dragon decks usually start off a bit slow, so a card like this where if your opponent's too aggro, you'll hit it on a prophecy, or it's just a nice card to have in your hand and start off with, it can kind of speed up the dragon tempo and allow them to get to the later rounds where they can do a lot more powerful moves. And finally, Crushing Blow, it's just a very simple deal free damage card, so it's a bit like Lightning Bolt, but a bit more restricted, but because it's restricted it can be free to go in any attribute whatsoever and yeah it's just a really nice card and very simple plus I mean you know the card art looked quite painful for that guy on the bottom but anyway that is going to end this video I hope you guys have enjoyed it if you want me to look at some other sorts of cards in the game let me know in the comments and hopefully I'll see you next time